scored 30 or more points in, in seven straight games. That hadn't been done at Tulane since 1998. Um, and, and when I asked Amari Jones about it Friday, he said, yeah, and the offense still isn't where you guys want it to be, but it still has the yeah. potential to be a lot better. It's just where do you feel like the offense is right now? Well, I think, uh, you know, one thing as a coach you always talk about is you want to improve as the year goes on. And obviously we've done that. We're getting better and better. Uh, you know, Gary, like we said at the beginning of this year, we're going to be a really good offense at some point. Uh, we hope that happens tomorrow. And uh, it's taken us a little while to get to this level. Uh, we've had a lot of young guys play, and everybody knows that. We've had a, t a ton of injuries. Everybody knows and understands that. we got a young quarterback that's going to be a great player. But uh, we've battled through it. I'm really proud of our coaching staff, you know, especially, you know, Coach Kennedy on the O-line, shuffling those guys around. And our kids have just embraced what we're doing, and we've gotten better each week. We really felt like we've left a lot of points out on the field the last three weeks. We felt like we could have easily had 50, you know, this past week if we complete a few more passes that we had there. Uh, you know, the week before, we, we, we fumbled a ball going across the end zone on the one and, and dropped a long pass, you know, that would have given us probably scored 50 that week. So we just we just got to continue to clean up some things, and uh, we got a chance to be really good you know, going down the stretch. And the good thing is, Gary, every one of them's back. You know what I mean? I mean, all these guys are back. Tajay Spears will be coming back from injury. And uh, we'll recruit again like mad men, like we always do. So the future is very bright. Yeah, you know, you want to be balanced. And, and, and what is balance? You know, people think balance means if you, if you snap it 80 times, you run it 40 and you throw it 40. That's not what balance is. Balance is being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And uh, you're, it's being able to do what is ever called for by the looks that the defense has given you. And we're getting to that point, obviously. You know, last week uh, they really wanted to take the run away, so we threw it more. Early in the game versus East Carolina, it was the same way. And then we loosened them up and got the run game going. So, uh, you know, you got to be able to do both. When you run into a good football team that's also well coached, they can take one side of it away. So when you can do both, it allows you to uh, be, a, be consistently – uh, you know, high octane or whatever. And, and, my, and Pratt is a, just a, his accuracy. I mean, it, without the drops early, he just had a really astronomical completion percentage against Army. Um, just how, how important is that? I, I can't say enough about Michael. You know, not only as a player, but as a person. Uh, you know, all great teams uh, through the history of time, you know, had a tough guy at quarterback. And Michael's a tough guy. You know, we talk all the time with our guys, toughness is not winning a bar fight. Toughness, a real man with real toughness, is how many blows can you take, how much adversity can this world put on you, and you still bounce back every day and handle your obligations and responsibilities and do what you're supposed to do. And Michael does that every day. He impacts people around him. He battles through being banged up, and uh, he's, just, he's just been really fun, and, uh, you know, he's got such a bright future. Yeah, you know, him and Hutterson and Dublin and Claybrook and Newtson and those guys, man, they just – they want to win. They want to raise the standards of this program. They understand where we're at going down the stretch. we got a chance to finish strong and, uh, you know, go to three straight bowl games. You know, looking long term, got a chance to, you know, to win out and win more regular season games. Been done a long time and just continue to raise the standard for this program, which is why we all came here. Uh, you know, to me, great is, you know, it also the same thing I tell my tell my two sons. Uh, gr great is getting the most out of what God gave you, you know, and uh, so that gr greatness is different for every human being, obviously. But for Michael, you know, I think greatness is is being an, an elite quarterback in this conference and this level. You know, I think the sky's the limit for how good he can be. I think he can be an all conference quarterback. I think he can be a draft pick. 
uh, you know. So, so I think just him maximizing his fullest potential, continuing to work in the weight room and getting stronger. Uh, you know, I think he can still get a little bit faster. I think his arm can get a little bit stronger and just learning the offense and, uh, you know, just working hard every day. No, you know, I can't say any names, but you know, Ed, we got, we got some pretty good ones committed right now. I think what sells to quarterbacks is what Tulane is. When Coach Fritz brought me in here, you know, I said, Coach, don't worry, man, relax. We're going to be able to recruit quarterbacks. That's not going to be a problem. We're going to run an offense that quarterback loves, uh, that quarterbacks love. We're going to be in a city that quarterbacks want to come play in. And, I mean, we're in the south. We're in New Orleans. There's good-looking girls everywhere. We got great academics, and we run a great offense. What, what quarterback doesn't love all those things? Quarterbacks love great offense. They love good food. They love pretty girls. They love great academics. We've got all that. Why wouldn't you want to come play quarterback here? I'm sold. There you go. You know, easy sell. <laughs> No, I think the people around him have gotten better. You know, I think I, – I don't think – I think he's been consistent from the, from the jump. You know, his first start against Houston, he played lights out under extreme duress. Uh, the next week versus SMU, he played great under duress. We had some O-line injuries. Uh, you know, we lost Jacob Robertson and Sorrell Brown at receiver, which were two starters at the beginning of the year. Uh, you know, you lose Ty J and Corey Dauphine. So, you know, he had some other guys growing up around him. Now, all of a sudden, we're going into game 10, and Jaquan Jackson's been a, become a really good player. Deuce Watts has become a really good player. Uh, Fat has really comfortable in the offense now. Our tight ends have grown. Mike Jones continues to progress. And, uh, you know, so all of a sudden, the people around him are playing better. And uh, we're completing more passes and more people are getting open. And he is better. I mean, he, he's getting through his reads faster, you know what I'm saying, than he was earlier in the year. But uh, he, he's playing at a high level. Yeah, uh, well, let's talk about it. In the first three games, we gave up one sack, all right? The week going into Houston, our starting right guard gets mono, all right? Our starting left guard pulls his calf. Our backup left tackle breaks his hand. And then in game versus Houston, our starting left tackle separates his kneecap. So within the first uh, two drives of that game, we've lost four O-linemen. Starting right guard, starting left guard, starting left tackle, and backup left tackle. So uh, we had a makeshift group out there for the rest of that game. We gave up a lot of sacks in that one. And then for the next two weeks, we played two really good teams, you know, with a lot of guys out. And, uh, and we gave up some sacks. We got behind and we had to throw it in passing situations. What you've seen the last few weeks is we've gotten our O-linemen back and we've been able to – you know, maintain leads early in the game where we could control and dictate the tempo of the game with run and pass, and they weren't defined passing situations. It goes back to what I said earlier about being balanced, being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And so really, that's why the sack total went astronomical for a few games and why it's gone back down. Yeah, you know, uh, you know what doesn't kill you make you stronger, Gary. And and we got a lot of guys that have played. They're all coming back. Uh, ben Newton's really stepped up at tackle, and uh, you know all these young guys that we've played are only going to be better for it. And uh, now we've got Claybrook back, Dublin's back healthy, Remitich is back, uh, Newton's come on, Tim Shafter's back. I mean, I just named four guys that are starting that were out with injury during that stretch we're talking about. So. Uh, 
you know, we've got a guy, a lot of guys have played a lot of minutes and we're just playing well. And Coach Kennedy's done a good job of, of shuffling them around. And, uh, you know, they got a lot of confidence right now. You know, we work on it every day, Gary. Uh, he's a kid that, you know, through his career here has not been a fumbler. He doesn't fumble in practice. It's just something that's kind of happened. He cares. Uh, Hood loves Tulane as much as anybody does. He loves this team. He does what's right all the time. I think it's something you're going to see go away because of his character and the way he works, and he knows it matters. Uh, it's been a lot of different things that have caused it, and uh, he's got to address it and fix it, and I, I've got great confidence that he will. All right, thank you guys. Roll wave.